welcome. You found my secret closet, my actual closet, where I have been stash and fashion, vintage fashion for decades. You know how they say, if walls could talk? Well, if clothes could talk, they would tell us a lot of stories. And this dress has an amazing story to tell. When I was in college, I made a guy friend. And uh, after knowing me for a, a few classes, he came to me and he said, you know, I love how you wear hats. Because in those days, I wore hats, you know, kind of like this. I wore them to class. And he said, my mother loves old hats and she wears them all the time. And I think you two would really hit it off. He said, my mother was an extra in Hollywood back in the old days. And, you know, she even had speaking parts. She was a bit actress, but I've actually seen her, he told me, in a couple of old films. Well, I always loved old movies, so I was beginning to get pretty intrigued. We met for lunch, and sure enough, here was this elderly lady wearing a hat, <laughs> and we did hit it off. And her son started encouraging her, tell, uh, tell Angela about, you know, the old days in Hollywood. And the lady said, oh, she wouldn't be interested. She has no idea who these old movie stars are. And I said, oh, I think you might be surprised. Um, I do love old movies. I know about silent movies. She seemed a little skeptical. Then I started throwing out Ramon Navarro, Gloria Swanson, Lillian Gish, John Gilbert. When I said John Gilbert, her eyes sort of widened. What do you know about John Gilbert, she asked. I said, well, I know he was one of the biggest stars of the silent era. He was so handsome. We continued to see each other. And one day she asked, would I like to come to her house for luncheon? She always called it luncheon. And I said, sure. When I got there after lunch, she went into another room and she got a box. This box, gold box. She opened it up, there was tissue paper inside, and in it was this dress. When she was in Hollywood, uh, after a couple of years, she was on a set one day, and a, a sandbag fell on her head, near her head, knocked her over, knocked her out. Uh, she was in a coma. That was the end of her budding movie career. But before that tragic, incident, accident. She was friends with someone at the studio who was well connected to Marion Davies, another old actress from the old days. In fact, a charming lady, a comedian, beautiful, beautiful. She was the mistress of William Randolph Hearst, who was married, but was one of the biggest tycoons in America. I can't tell you how influential he was. He built an estate. People call it Hearst Castle. My friend was invited there by a friend of hers. She said, oh no, I couldn't possibly go. Oh, this is an incredible opportunity, but I can't possibly go. I don't have the clothes. Because when you went to Hearst Castle, it was like a long weekend. You dressed for day, you dressed for night, you dressed for afternoon tea. You really had to have a lot of good clothes. She almost didn't do it, but sure enough, they rounded clothes from all over the place. Then she said she didn't have good luggage. She said, don't worry, we'll get some luggage from the prop department. Sure enough, they snuck some luggage out of the prop department and, and they were almost ready to go. But just before they went, my friend went on a little shopping trip to get incidentals. She walked past a shop in downtown Los Angeles and she said, I had no business going into that shop, but she did. And there she saw this dress. It was instant dress love. It cost almost a year's rent. She was paying $50 a month for rent. The dress was about $500. She used all of her savings to buy it. She packed it in the luggage that was borrowed from the prop department. She got in the private railroad car that Mr. Hurst provided and off they went to Hearst Castle. I think she said it was the first night she got there. She dressed for dinner. She wanted to make a big impression right away. She wore the dress. She went down the stairs and suddenly a man's eyes locked with hers. They, they were instantly attracted to one another. He didn't need an introduction. It was John Gilbert. 
they spent the whole weekend together. They, they, they danced, they laughed, they dined, they watched movies in the private theater, they swam, they canoed. It was just the time of her life. And when he first saw her in the dress, he told her that she was a vision and she was so lovely. And after a while, he told her he was sure she'd make it in the movies. And if not for that unfortunate sandbag incident, who knows, it might have happened. What a magical weekend this was for her. She never saw him again, except on the silver screen. But you could tell after all these years what that weekend meant to her. She asked me if I wanted to try on the dress. I said, oh. She said, well, I'd actually like you to. I said, oh, no. I, should I? Should I really? She said, no. I'd like to see it on a young person. She told me that she'd like to give me the dress on one condition. If I cherish it the way she did. But I didn't know where I could possibly wear the dress. I needed a special occasion. I knew I wouldn't be meeting John Gilbert, but I needed something special. So in my professional life, I was always in the TV news business. And one of the things, one of the honors you can possibly get in the television news business is an Emmy. So one time I was nominated for two Emmys in two different categories. I said, this is worthy of the dress. I wore the dress. I won both Emmys. Time passed. I went to another city, nominated again. These people haven't seen the dress. I'm going to wear the dress again. Wore the dress, won. Years pass, another nomination. Wore the dress, won. Years pass, and you get it. The third time I went, no, no, no. I can't wear the dress again. I can't wear it again to the Emmys. I've got to wear another dress. I did. I ask you, did I win? I did not. I think the dress was trying to tell me something. The dress was trying to tell me not to get too cocky. You know, life doesn't always unfold the way you think it's going to. So I think that I've cherished it long enough and I have no one to pass it to. But whoever gets this dress has to promise me to cherish it as much as she did, as much as I did, to keep the story alive. And there's only one other thing you have to do if you get this dress, if you buy this dress, and that is you have to send me selfies of you wearing it and having fun. Just remember, all of these dresses come with a history. I wish they could all talk. Thanks for listening to this long story in the secret closet, but please come back sometime, sometime soon. Bring your friends. There are plenty more stories. Probably none as good as this one, but I got more stories. Come back.